hello all uh, welcome to this uh, training uh, session so first start with my uh, table of contents let me minimize this and uh, uh, can i all uh, request all to uh, be on mute so just uh, unmute yourself uh, whenever you want to speak otherwise be on mute okay okay first uh, i know like most of you guys have already started uh, i mean you are already working on uh, oracle application but uh, as there are a couple of non oracle guys i mean especially rohit i'll just give a brief uh, introduction about uh, oracle uh, e business suite and the oracle modules then the, then we'll get into the business okay so yeah. so to give you a brief uh, introduction about uh, ERP like uh, there are a lot of ERP uh, available in the market and Oracle is uh, uh, one of the uh, um, uh, main uh, ERP product available in the market. So in a layman terms, ERP is nothing but a kind of an accounting package. So it's like kind of like in India you can see a tally, Wings, and there are a lot of other uh, accounting uh, packages. So Oracle is also such kind of an accounting package in layman terms, but it has got a broader functionalities. There are a lot of modules, a lot of functionalities uh, within uh, Oracle. So that's the reason you call it as an ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. So uh, now the, the two major ERP products available in the market uh, is one is Oracle and other one is the uh, SAP. And uh, Oracle is um, what you call uh, becoming a stronger in the market by acquiring all the uh, what you call uh, the major uh, by acquiring all other uh, companies which are providing a uh, uh, what do you call uh, 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 up-to-date features like a example like a uh, couple of years back uh, oracle is uh, oracle has acquired uh, peoplesoft which is uh, famous in uh, hrms and it has acquired uh, uh, siebel which is famous in uh, crm uh, and it has acquired uh, jd edwards which is famous in uh, financials so as most of you know that like uh, after mixing up all the features of all these uh, uh, tools it has come up with a uh, oracle fusion but uh, as part of this particular training session we are talking about oracle e business suit so within uh, oracle e business suit again started almost like i think 15 to 20 years back uh, there are a lot of versions within the oracle uh, e business suit uh, i started uh, working from 10.7 and then uh, from 10.7, uh, the other major version is 11.1103, and there are a lot of other minor versions. And then 11.5 is the another major version, 11.5.5, 11.5.10, and then started with the release 12 version. Again, within release 12, there are a lot of uh, versions. 12, it started from 12.00 to 12.06. Six, 6, and then. Uh, Then again, 12.1.3, and now we are in 12.2.6. So 12.2.6 is the current version which is available in the market. This is the latest version which is available in the release tool. So not sure whether Oracle will uh, uh, do any future releases under uh, release tool or they encourage the users or the, the companies to go for the uh, fusion. But as of now, this is the latest. Uh, version which is available in the market as far as the release tool is concerned okay now coming back to the uh, the usage of erp like why do we go for erp like what is the need for going of an erp we can very well record your uh, what you call uh, transactions in a kind of an excel sheet or a small accounting packet but why do we go for a erp so the main reason for going for an erp or an accounting package is to record your business events or your accounting events so if you start any business like whatever the accounting events or the business events which are incurred in your business needs to be recorded in some system it could be an excel it could be an accounting package or it could be an erp so we'll take a simple example okay so take an example you got one particular business okay and you incurred some kind of an expenditure so if you incur any expenditure say the expenditure could be for purchasing of say stationery the simple general entry when you purchase a stationery will be stationery account debit 100 dollars and say 
cash account credit hundred dollars for the time being we'll forget about the liability and other stuff so take a simple entry uh, stationary account debit hundred dollars cash account credit hundred dollars on one particular day you incurred this particular expenditure well and good you recorded this particular uh, uh, entry in your excel sheet okay and uh, after a couple of days you incurred uh, uh, another expenditure like wherein like you purchase some assets so the entry would be assets account debit say two hundred dollars cash account credit say two hundred dollars okay it's only just like a one company one department uh, and it is located in only in one country and all the transactions are in a single uh, currency say say usd okay so if that's the case you can even very well record in a kind of an excel sheet or a kind of a simple accounting package but as your business is huge wherein you have got number of companies which are located across the world and we and you have got a requirement to uh, record your transactions in multiple currencies and you got number of departments and you got number of transactions then obviously a simple accounting package or excel sheet would not be a viable option so that's where you start using the erp of course the cost involved in implementing uh, erp is huge compared to a small accounting package but at the same time the benefits which you reap from the uh, uh, erp uh, is huge compared to a small accounting package i mean basically from an oracle perspective it's internet enabled you can access uh, the same environment from anywhere across uh, the world you can implement your approvals you can implement your workflows you can implement your different uh, business events using your uh, customization and you got a lot of uh, internet um, I, I i enabled modules and as that and uh, as oracle being an erp like you can uh, record the end-to-end -end business flow from say uh, data uh, from say uh, from purchase requests to uh, purchase uh, i mean if you, if you talk about uh, p2p flow then chart from your uh, uh, purchase equation then the purchase order then purchase order received then the ap invoice then the ap payment and then uh, gl uh, accounting so the entire end to end flow can be recorded in a erp using through uh, using so many different modules so that's where uh, erp comes into picture okay so arvind uh... I mean the the access which we got currently for the instance it is twelve dot six right? Yeah, twelve dot two dot six. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, like uh, after the session is completed, uh, I mean I'm still preparing this uh, training material. So I'll be completing uh, the preparation of the uh, training material for the general ledger in in two to three days. So maybe by uh, Tuesday or Wednesday I'll be sharing the training material for general ledger. And then uh, I'll slowly start preparing the uh, training material for the other modules. So if you look at this particular example, like uh, an ERP example before an ERP. So like uh, this is a, a kind of a business uh, scenario wherein uh, you can see there are a lot of flows. Uh, if you want to record some kind of a transactions wherein ERP is not implemented, so sales department needs to integrate uh, or like you need to inform warehouse, warehouse needs to inform accounting, and then purchasing needs to inform vendor, and then warehouse needs to uh, and purchasing also needs to have an integration with inventory customer. So there is no proper flow, and there are a lot of uh, what you call offline communication which needs to have happen in a non ERP world. But look at this uh, the below picture. If it's an ERP word, it's very simple. Everything is coming from a single database. So there will be a single source of uh, truth for your entire information because uh, all the transactions are all the flows are happening in one particular database. And there is a very minimal offline communication. So even the emails can be directly generated from an uh, ERP uh, system from a communication perspective and also it is also required from an audit perspective and also like most of the companies also uh, go for a uh, erp the reason being even their auditors whether internal auditors or external auditors also prefer a major uh, certified erp compared to an uh, accounting package uh, for recording of those transactions i mean i'm not saying that accounting package is not certified even accounting packages are also certified by uh, the auditors but if you go for an erp you got a lot uh, what do you call huge advantages compared to uh, a small uh, 
uh, er uh, sorry accounting package okay so to just uh, give a background uh, so within oracle we have got a uh, lot of streams uh, or you call uh, suits so we got the major suits are oracle uh, financials oracle supply chain oracle hrms oracle projects and oracle crm uh, customer relationship management so within each of these uh, streams you got uh, uh, modules so as you can see under oracle financials we got uh, general ledger accounts payable accounts receivable assets cash management advanced uh, global intercompany system so as part of our training session we'll be covering all these modules including the eb tax and within the supply chain uh, we got uh, modules like uh, inventory order management purchasing bill of materials uh, work in process and uh, within hrms we got couple of modules which you can see here and similarly we got uh, different modules under project suit and crm suit so these are the five suits within the uh, oracle erp so whether you talk about uh, 11i or r12 or uh, fusion uh, these are the main suits within the uh, oracle erp so any questions as of now uh, uh, rohit i think uh, others would have already uh, know all these uh, concepts uh, uh, rohit no i'm i'm clear yeah okay thanks <coughs> okay uh the uh, other thing is like uh, throughout my uh, sessions for all the configuration uh, related things i'll use a br100 so i, I cr created a mock uh, br100 for our configurations so to give a background uh, to rohit uh, rohit br100 is a configuration document which includes the details of all the configurations which you perform in the system okay from an implementation perspective okay so uh, oracle implementation follows something called aim methodology aim aim stands for application implementation methodology and as far as the fusion is concerned we are following something else like uh, uh, oum oracle unified methodology we will not be talking about that particular met methodology so as far as the release tool is concerned we generally follow your application implementation uh, methodology so what is this aim so aim just talks about the documentation uh, the, the different documents which you need to prepare throughout your sdlc life cycle as you know that most of the people uh, uh, know that uh, uh, these are the uh, in an, any sdlc life cycle so these are the different phases requirement gathering okay i want this uh, session to be an interactive so i'll ask people uh, to uh, uh, pitch in like uh, wherever required okay so what is the next phase uh, within the sdlc life cycle solution design solution build testing which could be unit testing sit testing uat card go live post plot support so at a high level these are the different phases in the stlc life cycle and a methodology talks about preparation of different documents in all these phases so for a requirement gathering so the, it talks about something called rd20 for uh, solution design it talks about something called uh, bp80 and then for configuration it talks something about uh, br100 and for testing it talks about something called te20 and uh, te40 okay so for each and every phase uh, the implementation methodology talks about a uh, uh, what do you call preparation of a document there are a lot of documents which are specified in a methodology but uh, the major documents which we uh, generally use in any implementation projects are rd20 bp80 br100 te20 te40 and for uh, uh, data conversion we use uh, C C, uh, cv documents and uh, for the any functional design documents we use md50 and md70 so at a high level these are the major documents which are specified in the a methodology 
so now as far as uh, our uh, sessions are concerned i prepared uh, the br100 that is a configuration document for all the modules uh md50 and 70 are for the okay so if you uh, go for a, uh, yeah so if you go for a, any custom yeah so if you go for a customization of any functionality maybe building of a new interface building of a new report then uh, you prepare md50 which is a functional design document and then uh, md70 which is a technical design document so generally the way it goes is basically if a customer says that oh, there is a, a, a custom requirement that is he want to uh, he want a new report to be built or new interface to be built then that's where your uh, a consultant uh, goes and uh, uh, what do you call it? he okay, he, then he builds first. First. okay yeah he gets a requirement from the business users and document that in the md50 document and then uh, the consultant uh, sits with the technical uh, the functional consultant sits with the technical consultant and technical consultants understands the requirement and prepare something called md70 document and, oh. also, and also for your understanding rohit like uh, in in any erp uh, whether it's an oracle or sap so we got a kind of a three main resources functional consultant technical consultant and dba so these are the main three uh, resources who play a key role in any uh, implementation project so functional consultant will be doing a configurations uh, technical consultant will be building uh, integrations or any customizations and a dba is a person who will be who is the backbone of the ERP? So he's the person who will be installing the uh, ERP software. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you see my uh, screen uh, for the Oracle organization structure? hello yes 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 okay okay this is uh, this is the uh, organization structure which is followed in uh, oracle at the highest level we got something called a business group so in my next slide i'll exp explain this with an example so at a highest level we got a business group and under business group we got a ledgers under ledgers we got uh, yeah, legal entities or companies and under legal entities we got something called operating units so in any implementation project it all depends on the uh, your requirement gathering at the time of implementation wherein you come up with the number of ledgers number of legal entities and number of operating unit it's not it, there is no stand and fast rule that oh a company can have only say one ledger or say two ledgers so it all depends on your business requirement there could be a multiple ledgers multiple legal entities multiple operating units and again under one ledger we can have any number of legal entities under uh, under one legal entities you can have any number of operating units or it could be just one 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 scenario where like you can have one ledger one legal entity one operating unit in my last 12 years of career so i have seen different scenarios i have seen scenarios wherein there is only one ledger one legal entity one operating unit i have seen a scenarios where, wherein there are more than 25 ledgers 50 legal entities 50 operating Let me go to the next slides wherein I'll explain this particular structure with an example. Okay, so we will take uh, say uh, Reliance uh, company as an example. So as everybody uh, know about the Reliance company, so that's the reason why uh, I have chosen uh, Reliance. So I I thought of taking some example from uh, US, but uh, okay, some of you guys may not be knowing about the companies in US. So I just thought of taking the Reliance as an example. So as everybody are close to this company. So at a top level, we got a uh, business group is nothing but a Reliance group. And under Reliance group, we got different uh, ledgers. So Reliance INR ledger, it could be a Reliance USD ledger, Reliance Canada ledger. So uh, we know that like uh, Reliance has got uh, major presence in India, but yes, Reliance has got operations in US as well as other countries like Canada. So in general, in general, again, this is not an hard and fast rule. In general, we will have one ledger per country. So in this example, uh, for all the operations under India, they will be recorded under Reliance INR ledger. For all the operations under US, they will be recorded under Reliance USD ledger. And similarly, for the operations under Canada, they are uh, recorded under Reliance 
CAD ledger. Under each ledger, you can have multiple companies. And e under each, uh, each uh, company or legal entity, you can have multiple operating units. If you take in this example, uh, so how do you, how do you uh, identify a particular, uh, uh, within a business, like how do you identify uh, what is a legal entity and uh, what are the different uh, operating units under legal entity? In general, legal entities are the entities or the businesses which are registered with the local authorities, local legal authorities. So in general, Reliance Communications Limited is one legal entity in, in this example. One legal entity and it's a, it's a company. Reliance Textile INC is another company which is a legal entity. Similarly, Reliance Telecom is another company registered under uh, USD ledger. Reliance Oil and Gas is another company which is registered under USD ledger. Similarly, so take an example, uh, Reliance Software is another company which is registered under Canadian uh, legal authorities. So it will be under Canada ledger. And for each of these companies, I have assigned one company code. So company code is just an identifier. So uh, uh, so whenever you are doing a data enter, you do not select Reliance communication. You just select the uh, company code save zero 01. So as soon as you select the company code zero 01, I mean, because like there is some other screens, obviously as part of my training session, I'll be explaining like how do you do, how you do those setups. But like there is some set of variant, you say that zero 01 is nothing but your Reliance communication. Zero 02 mm -hmm. is nothing but your Reliance Textiles similarly 03, 04, and 05. So in all your data entry, you just select 01, so which is nothing but you are selecting Reliance Communication. So under Reliance Communication, so that's a legal uh, authority uh, or a legal entity which is registered with the Indian legal authorities. Under Reliance Communication, so Reliance Postpaid is one business and Reliance Prepaid is a, another business. So Reliance Postpaid can be created as one operating unit, prepaid can be created as another operating unit so it's basically different businesses under le one legal entity can be created as a separate operating unit similarly for the under reliance textiles reliance cotton extraction is one operating unit cotton uh, clothes manufacturing is a another operating unit and so on so similarly under a telecom and oil and gas and software also you can actually divide that into multiple operating units so any questions as far as this uh, group structure is concerned, it is very important that you need to understand this because we, I'll be using the, I'll not be using the vision operations uh, structure in my uh, sessions. I'll be using this particular structure. So we'll be going ahead and creating this ledger, legal entities and operating units. And we'll be starting only those, uh, we'll start using only uh, what you call mm -hmm. that structure for our, uh, uh, what you call data entry in all the modules. So any questions uh, under this uh, Reliance group structure? Yeah, uh, Arvind, so when we come to operating units, mm -hmm. uh, why can't we divide it based on a state again, like uh, under Reliance communication, mm -hmm. instead of saying Reliance postpaid and prepaid, mm -hmm. can we say uh, Reliance AP, Reliance uh, Karnataka, Reliance, whichever state it is, can we say like that yes, and yes. under that? Yes, that's possible. So as I said that it all depends on your business scenario. If your reporting is like if you want to have a kind of a reporting wherein you want to say that, okay, I want to see uh, what you call uh, the data or the uh, the accounting transactions of all the states under postpaid. Okay, then if you go with that particular option, Reliance postpaid will be uh, what you call one operating unit. And as far as the reporting is concerned, as far as the uh, uh, maybe the examples, whatever you are given, AP, Telangana, Karnataka, you can use those things as kind of as one of the say chart of account segment. So that is one option. Other option, what you said rightly said, yes, you can have 29 operating units or 31 operating units based on one uh, uh, operating unit per each state. So the, this particular structure is not an hard and fast tool. It all depends on like how do you want your, I mean, how your business user want to have a reporting, okay? Okay, so, and when it comes to uh, the legal entity level, that is at, at Reliance Communication level, so basically to Reliance Communication, your reporting, uh, this is the amount for postpaid and this is the amount for prepaid, right? So yes. when it goes one, one step up, like mm -hmm. uh, at the ledger level mm -hmm. uh, there you are not uh, you are not dividing it based on postpaid or prepaid rather you are just dividing it based on zero one i mean the the only the company code 
exactly so if you if you take this particular structure so uh, uh, from a subledges perspective yes the data is bifurcated uh, so uh, under reliance postpaid whenever you run any kind of subledger reports from reliance postpaid in this example under reliance postpaid and reliance prepaid we are using the same company code of 01 okay but if you run any subledger reports from mm -hmm. uh, under reliance postpaid it will show the data of only that particular operating unit similarly under reliance prepaid if you run any reports it will show the data of only that particular operating unit that is it is going to show the data of only prepaid but if you say that, okay. say that uh, 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 even though uh, from a GL perspective also, I want to have a, uh, what do you call, uh, bifurcation of that, like uh, the division of that, then what you can do is, you can have one uh, legal entity reliance communications, okay? It is possible that you can associate two company goes to that reliance communications, okay? Zero one and say example, say uh, zero two. I mean, in this example, 0 2 is assigned to Reliance Textiles, but for argument's sake, it could be 0 1 and 0 2. So, 0 1 is nothing but your Reliance communication. So, the description of 0 1 will be Reliance communication postpaid. The description of 0 2 will be Reliance communications prepaid. Okay. And then, under Reliance postpaid operating unit, you put your rules in such a way that always users use 0 1. And under Reliance prepaid, you always use 0 2. Okay. And then once it goes to GL, then you can di differentiate your data between 0, 01 and 0, 02. So if you go with that particular structure, whether you run the report from subledger or GL, yes, you will have a differentiation or you, you can then get the data of only 0, 01 or you can get the data only for 0, 02. Okay. Okay. So, so basically this bifurcation is just based on the company requirement or, or the business requirement, right? Say for exactly. example, in India, yeah so this particular yes go ahead sorry yeah so in india it, it it's like a we a register uh, reliance for every state so no 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 maybe I, i'll come to that particular point so as far as the registrations are concerned there are a lot of registration in india no i i, I understand yeah, i mean just as an just to un, for an understanding purpose i'm saying so for example in india we register reliance communications or reliance for every state so we can say under reliance communications reliance ap or reliance karnataka and under that you can maintain postpaid prepaid or internet connection or anything something like that right yeah but again coming uh, coming back to that registration perspective generally legal authority in india i can take india as an example legal authority is registered with the uh, companies act so we, which is at a central level so you do not uh, in general unless until if say there could be a scenario wherein like Reliance Communications, India Private Limited. Okay, so that's one one company which is registered at a central level. So you use the same company whether it's an AP or Telangana or Karnataka. Okay, but because of various other reasons, okay, for some tax benefits or for some other reasons, you can even go something like Reliance Communication, AP Private Limited, Reliance Communication, uh, Canadiga Private Limited, something like that. If you go with that particular options, okay, then there will be multiple legal entities. Okay, so in that scenario, what will happen is one legal entity. I mean, there is one ledger, one legal entity, one operating unit. Again, under the INR ledger, there could be another legal entity and one operating unit. So as far as this is concerned, that is legal entity operating unit concern, it will be one on one. In this example, it's two operating units under one legal entity. But if you go with that particular option, one legal entity, one operating unit. Okay. In general, in India, uh, as far as a company is concerned, it is registered with under the Companies Act. It is at a central level. But yes, there are local tax registration, your VAT registrations and other tax registration, which happens at the state level. Okay. And as far as that tax registration is concerned, you can handle that in a different way. But as far as this structure is concerned, it should be like you need to take into consideration almost all your business requirement, all your reporting as well as taxation requirement and come up with this particular structure. So that's the reason why, especially in any implementation project, this particular uh, building of this particular structure itself will take a lot of time because once you set this particular structure, there are a couple of things which you cannot change or like rather most of the things you cannot change. Once you set up your chart of account or your calendar or currency, once you set up, you cannot change that. And even the, as far as the legal entities or operating units are concerned, yes, uh, uh, you can increase and decrease the uh, legal entities or operating unit, but the base structure, is like uh, once for all like so once you set up that it's not possible to change and if for some reason if you want to change then you need to go for a say re-implementation something like that so this particular structure itself will take a lot of time but whatever i have seen is like in all my implementation project any company which is going for an erp ideally 
will have some existing legacy system wherein they are recording this particular transaction it could be an erp package or some other package so as far as the structure is concerned yes we will have at least a kind of an overview of what they are doing in their existing system and then we will try to map that to or actually maybe it could be a slightly different terminology so the legal entity operating unit terms could be different in their existing legacy system but more or less like the the, the structure uh, that is your ledger currency calendar are more or less same whether you talk about their existing legacy system or oracle erp all right and just one more question so when we say uh, uh my operating unit is reliance postpaid so what would be the inventory organization un under this one okay under each operating unit you can have uh, multiple uh, uh, you can have inventory org and again uh, sub inventory org so i i did not include those inventory org and sub inventory org because as far as this particular uh, training session is concerned we are not covering the supply chain modules okay but again under yeah under one in uh, operating unit you can have an inventory org and under inventory org you can have uh, what do you call uh, you can have multiple inventory org under each inventory org you have sub inventories and the lowest level is something called a stock locator so if you talk about the total structure business group ledger legal entity operating unit inventory org sub inventory org and stock locator okay so just just for for an example sake so under reliance postpaid for example what would be the inventory organizations uh it could be like so again uh, and, uh, so uh, uh, so if you take in this example so reliance postpaid and reliance prepaid like we are talking about the reliance postpaid and reliance prepaid as the entire uh, country level okay so the inventory or could be uh, one inventory or say per state it could be one inventory of per city it could be anything it depends on uh, their existing uh, business structure so if you talk about one uh, uh, inventory org per state then under reliance postpaid and under reliance prepaid you will have whatever the number of states whatever we have so many number of inventory orgs and within the inventory org you can have sub inventory org and within the sub inventory org you will have a stock locators Mm, okay got it yeah yeah so so it 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 can be like uh, states would be inventory or and maybe districts can be sub inventory and uh, the uh, uh, cities or uh, villages yeah, can so, be the uh, yeah so yeah, so, so at a lowest level right? so yeah so state could be an inventory org and uh, maybe say district could be a sub inventory org and stock locator could be uh, within the stock lo locator you can have a proper naming convention so within a district mm -hmm. Uh, say a city okay so within the stock locator uh, it could be a kind of a group of segments so you can say uh, city dot uh, uh, say uh, building dot floor dot a that's how you can uh, give a uh, what you call naming convention for a stock locator so that uh, it is well, it is easy for you to identify the location of a particular item all right so okay so within uh sub inventory also i mean stock locator also you can have a, a specific location right yeah, yeah. so that, that's how the, the combination of all those four uh, segments is nothing but your stock locator which is your uh, city okay. dot yeah. building dot floor dot ale yeah okay got it yeah okay and and uh, so when we when we say code combination does the stock locator um stock also come under this this code combination or no 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 no, no. so for so for gl code combination that's a different segment structure for stock locator also there is a separate uh, kind of a combination so in the stock locator you can give a you can set up that in the inventory module like as, how, as to what is your combination of segments which forms a stock locator okay okay got it yeah. okay so uh, what about others uh, niranjan rohit Please. and uh, pratap Hey, Arvind, uh, Niranjan, a uh, quick question, right? Like uh, my basic question is in element terms, like assume two scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, a system already in place, which was using a non Oracle system. Uh -huh. Okay. So it can be some legacy, uh, uh, let's say not even a ERP system, not even a legacy ERP system, some system they're maintaining separately for GL, sub ledger, separate system, something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now they decide, the business decided to move to Oracle ERP. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now my question is, uh, in order to uh, baseline this org structure in, uh, in Oracle new system, 
uh, from the functional consultant perspective or from the implementer perspective mm -hmm. uh, to whom we are going to interact and uh, how we need to start the interaction to finalize this is what the structure should be okay okay so in general like uh, i'll again uh, take an example from my one of the implementation project uh, uh, i think uh, yeah uh, so what we did is basically this being a major decision okay you do not as far as this decision is concerned in general you do not deal with the uh, low end uh, data entry clerks or the managers okay it directly starts from the uh, their uh, managers or the directors okay first as far as this is concerned first we'll get the uh, requirements uh, that is like first we'll get the data from their existing system as to how is their structure looks like okay and obviously uh, the main challenge there would be sometimes we may not be understanding their systems and obviously they they are totally zero on oracle perspective they do not understand anything about oracle so it takes sometimes days and weeks to understand their existing system and try to match that with our existing uh, with our oracle structure so uh, they can say for for legal entity they can use a different term for operating unit they can use a different term so first you need to get their uh, their ex existing say financial reports uh, okay or other documents which will show their structure and also uh, in our case what we have done is we have even gone to their branches we have uh, what do you call talk to the uh, different business users to understand their existing structure and then come and then we try to map that particular structure with the oracle structure based on our assumptions and based on our assumptions we have mapped the structure and we have actually presented to their board saying that this is what is my understanding of your accounting system and this is how it looks like so whenever you are again uh, what do you call presenting this particular structure you should again talk even in their existing legacy system terms so for uh, for the so for the word ledger it could be a same word even in their uh, uh, in their accounting package but as far as the legal entity and operating unit is concerned it could be a different term for uh, uh, for legal entity they, they just use the word say company for operating unit they can use the word say business unit or a department or something like that so you need to correlate their business with oracle and try to present this particular structure and you need to explain this in detail so that they understand it properly because as i said that once you make a decision on this particular structure it is not possible to make the changes easily so to answer your question as to whom you actually uh, start interacting more or less it starts from their uh, senior managers or kind of a directors and with regard to documentation yes you need to uh, uh, whatever the information which is possible from their system whether they will provide you an access to their system or whether they will provide you a hard copies you need to get as much information as possible and you need to read through those documents especially the first important thing is you need to first uh, read their financial statements to understand how their company structures are looking like and how their reporting is actually looking like how many companies uh, companies are there like under uh, which countries they are actually registered what are the currencies under which they are actually doing their business and uh, what are the states wherein they are registered and what is their taxation structure so you need to take into consideration all these uh, aspects okay so just to uh, understand right uh, from if we reach out to the senior managers or the high level people in the business point of view uh, they might give the very overview or a high level overview of the org structure correct uh -huh. so now uh, to determine our org structure going forward our org structure in oracle mm -hmm. uh, uh, like you mentioned right uh, to correlate or the ma mapping the legacy system to the new uh, future erp system uh, uh, how do you take the example like taking a, an extract of a financial report saying that what is your legal, legal entity what is your business group in your system right now and how it is going to affect uh, uh, the new system or the new org once you implement into oracle right so do you need to telecast any uh, any uh, any uh, example so that they will get familiarize or kind of making an interest so that uh, they will visualize less yes i want to be an oracle because they can very well say that whatever you are showing this org structure i can anyway do it in my legacy system also why you are uh, telling the same structure in a different naming convention so they will try to give kind of an argument right when, when we reach out to the business people basically because that's where you're going to win that uh, kind of uh, uh, a feedback from the senior management that yes we want to go back to oracle instead of the current system right? okay yeah yeah okay so okay so to answer those uh, questions 
So as far as the structure is concerned, again, there are a couple of things. Are you doing a business process reengineering? Okay. Or are you implementing their structure? Okay. If you're talking about a business process reengineering, yes. So then, then again, you need to do uh, what you call uh, uh, take their uh, business structure and try to do uh, changes to that particular structure. But if you are not talking about the business process reengineering, bear in mind like uh, you, to, uh, if they say that okay, we can uh, use the same structure in our uh, in our existing system, this is not just or this particular presentation is not just the Oracle. There are a lot of features which are available within Oracle. So if they say that we can do the same thing in their system, but what about the controls? What about the approvals? What about the workflows? What about the emailing? Are they able to do the, the same thing in their system? Okay. What about audit control? So I have seen one example like uh, uh, for one of the client uh, wherein we went for uh, implementation of Oracle. More or less, even they uh, every project I have seen almost like 10 to 15 clients as of now. In every project, obviously there will be an hesitation from the uh, business user whenever we are going for a new ERP or new system. The reason being they would have been accustomed to the existing system for a couple of years. So in one of the project, like they, they were using a Visual Fox Pro and they were using that Visual Fox Pro for I think close to 15 years. Every user, every damn user has got an access to front end and back end. They do not even know what is front end and what is back end. Okay. Everybody has got a back end. Everybody has got a front end. And if they some uh, the system is such a way that if uh, all of a sudden if the senior manager says that like how come my revenue is uh, only say uh, twenty thousand uh, say hundred thousand dollars it should have been say one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or something like that somebody uh, will review that and do a back end entry there is no proper control okay approvals everything is coming uh, do, going through an offline communications it's going through uh, offline that is like uh, sending a separate emails by looking at the system and then sending an emails okay there is no workflow structure and uh, there is no proper documentation. So all these things are controlled by within a ERP. And that is the reason why there are a lot of concerns which are raised there, which are raised by their internal audit team as to uh, uh, this. Uh, there are no proper controls and they were in the process of uh, selling that particular uh, company to other major company. And whenever you uh, major company want to purchase your company, they will also check like how are the internal controls in your system and what exactly is the accounting package are they? ERP which you are using in their system. So they have uh, taken a decision to go for Oracle. The major reason is like uh, they want to have a proper control and they want to showcase that there are there are proper controls within their system before they actually sell their business to uh, uh, some other uh, company. So uh, so maybe they, they will be able to what you call portray the same structure in their existing system. Yes, they should have been otherwise uh, how they are running their business and how they are using their existing legacy system. But there are a lot of other features which are available in our system but again at the same time if they still argue that oh we can use the same we can do the same thing in their system so just we need to remember like whether it's an existing accounting package or an oracle recording of a transaction is a recording of a transaction if there is one ledger there you can say that even in oracle also you can have only one ledger and if you see there's one particular company which is doing its business in only in one country okay in india Okay, and there's only one legally uh, registered uh, uh, what do you call uh, company and uh, it has got operations in say multiple uh, states. Okay, whether you talk about Oracle or whether you talk about the accounting package, it it could be same one legal entity, one ledger. You cannot say that I want to have uh, say 29 uh, say 30, 30 ledgers for each uh, state. The reason being it's the same thing whether it's you, uh, the recording of the transaction, whether you talk about Oracle or whether you talk about the uh, their uh, accounting package. As far as the reporting is concerned, yes, you can show them the options like say for each uh, state you can run so and so report. You can you can divide the states into different operating units and maybe in their exist maybe in their existing. Uh, just give me a minute. Sorry, that was my son. Sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So, so for each state, uh, you, you you can you can divide that each state into a different uh, uh, operating unit, and you can run the reports, and you can say that yes, uh, for each state there will be one operating unit, and uh, 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 the access for that particular operating unit will be given only to a couple of users. So that means uh, the users of that particular state will be able to run the reports of only that particular operating unit. They will not have access to other operating units. Something like that. That is just one example. 
Okay, okay. So uh, much fair enough. Uh, Arun. And one more point, right? Uh, the other angle is, uh, let's say that I'm already, my legacy system is in Oracle ERP itself, but it's in the lower version, right? Uh -huh. now, since we are in the higher version, okay? So uh, the business decides to go and upgrade the uh, higher version of Oracle to utilize for their efficiency of a business perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So now in this point, uh, it can be a re-implementation or it can be a simple upgrade, right? Possible, mm -hmm. right? These are possible yeah. options we have when we mm -hmm. go for the uh, same version of Oracle, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, I mean, maybe from your experience, did you notice if we, in, in what scenario you would be considering it as a re-implementation or in uh, or you simply determine that it's is simply you don't need to do any business uh, org level changes you simply need to upgrade to make it uh, whatever the latest available version of oracle erp we have there could be some great decision making on that angle when you're changing the version of uh, instance itself right yeah yeah okay so uh, as far as the upgrade is concerned if there is no decision that they they should not be making any changes to their say chart of account structure or a calendar or say currency okay then it could be a pretty straightforward uh, upgradation okay so in my current client it was actually upgradation plus transformation so when i say transformation it's kind of a business process re-engineering okay instead of going for the re-implementation as long as there is no structural changes that is no changes in the chart of accounts or a calendar or currency my suggestion would be to do a, a proper upgrade from 11a to r12 and then do a business process re-engineering okay and then do kind of a transformation that is changing of your workflows approvals customizations something like that the reason being if you go for a re-implementation re-implementation involves a lot of effort time money compared to your upgrade so it is up to the business uh, uh, users or the uh, the business management to do a best judgment call as to what would be my cost if i go for i mean rough cost if i go for a re-implementation what will be my rough cost if i go for upgradation because instead of going for a re-implementation you can very well go for the upgradation plus transformation Unless until I mean unless until if there is a changes in the ch say chart of account structure or calendar, then there is no other way. You need to definitely go for the re-implementation because Oracle do not provide any other way. Uh, I, I know like Oracle SSI. I think when I was with OSSI, they have provided some kind of a custom solution, but we keep we keep that particular custom solution aside. But otherwise, as a standard functionality, uh, we cannot make any changes to your chart of account uh, structure or a calendar once they are implemented. So as long as there are no such kind of structural changes, go for. Uh, upgradation and then transformation otherwise go for the re-implementation okay when you're going for a simple upgradation based on the call from the business decision uh -huh. uh, the involvement of functional uh, functional people will be minimal right because that is poorly doing uh, doing by the admin people correct uh, because it's a system upgrade only no interaction with the functional because as there is no change in the org structure no correct no uh, so your answer is yes if you are talking about a, a minimum really uh, what do you call it, minimum changes say from 12.2.4 to 12.5 or 12.2.6 but from as far as 11a to r12 are concerned there are a lot of changes especially in financial modules that too in the uh, general ledger module so there are a lot of functional inputs required the reason being as soon as you do an upgrade yes uh, dbs will be able to do an upgrade from say 11a to r12 but i have seen in most of my upgradation projects there are a lot of challenges like uh, whenever you do an upgradation, there are a lot of new features. So obviously, a functional per consultant play a major role in training the business users. Because if you look at the uh, general ledger as from 11A to R12, as far as the accounting setup ledger is concerned, or the sorry, ledger setup is concerned, it's totally uh, look and feel and the functionality is totally changed compared to 11A and R12. So directly when you show, I mean, users would have seen the uh, setup books screen in 11A for ages. But when they see the same accounting setup manager, uh, accounting setup screen, uh, which is nothing but your ledger screen in R12, they do not even understand what is that. So functional consultant plays a major role in testing as well as training a business users and in, in an upgradation project. And technical consultants plays a major role in doing the, in upgrade, uh, as far as all the customizations are concerned, then in most of the cases as the table structures has changed, then you need to do a kind of a rework on all the customization. But uh, uh, but to answer your question, whether functional consultant plays any role, yes, he plays a major role uh, in the major upgradation. 
but uh, as far as the minor upgradations are concerned from within a, a, a one word uh, from one version to another uh, minor version then yes maybe the role of a functional concern would be uh, uh, very minimum okay so uh, going from uh, just a small request uh, arvin See, like you are highlighting right where, where you are facing a lot of uh, challenges in terms of interacting with business to to train them for the transition from 11 to 12 right maybe while you are covering the general ledger module uh, you can pinpoint those highlighted bullet points right like this is where the communication needs to be uh, given to the end users or to the people who are going to access going for kind of thing so that we will at least know right uh, these are the points we need to uh, i mean uh, highlight ourselves to sure learn. okay sure 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 this all man thank you yeah okay you can continue yeah uh, what about pratap are you are you good with this are you there pratap yeah, yes sir yeah. okay so okay uh okay so i'll move forward So, uh, Rohit, uh, I hope even you are clear, clear on this. Uh, yes, yes. I have a additional question. Like those were really good questions, like from Niranjan and all. Like, so I was thinking, what would be the causes uh, for the business uh, where a change of chart of account structure may happen? So. Okay. So to answer that particular question. Uh, probably we can see yeah. later touch on general ledger and. Yeah, I'll, I'll just give you an overview as of now. So uh, in, in a normal scenario, like obviously that is the reason why it's a very, very major decision at the time of implementation as to what is my existing chart of account structure and how my chart of account structure should look like even in future. So one of the reason wherein we can go for the change in the chart of account structure is acquiring of a new company. Okay, if you acquire a new company, maybe the reporting requirements of the new company would be totally different and it may not be exactly matching with our chart of account structure. So that could be the one scenario wherein we may go for the uh, upgradation, uh, the uh, update, updation of our chart of accounts, which is not possible. So it will be a re-implementation. But again, it's a it's a major decision because even though if you are acquiring a new company, if you go, uh, if you want to go for a re-implementation, then then you it involves a lot of cost for your company. Then you try to minimize that and you try to achieve those reporting requirements through some other ways, not for the not through the uh, what do you call uh, updating of your chart of account structure because that involves a re-implementation and if it is not at all possible uh, if you are not able to meet them through any other means and the, and if you are left with only one option of uh, what do you call updating of your chart of account then you need to go for the re-implementation okay. okay but yes uh, yeah but again there are some companies like uh, now nowadays like there are some companies uh, which are available in the market like uh, e-printers e i've seen one company and oss is another company wherein they are providing some kind of a custom solution wherein like you can update your chart of account structure so they have got their total custom solution which is inbuilt tested and readily available and they'll be able to do that uh, total what you call uh, implementing that and uh, what you call mm -hmm. Uh, updating your uh, uh, the entire structure uh, in couple of months of course even they also charge a lot uh, uh, yeah arvind uh, one more question here so uh, in case if i'm not doing I'm, if i if i'm not going for any upgrade say for example i'm already on 12.2.6 but i just wanted to do an update on the or upgrade on the chart of accounts say mm -hmm. for example today i am on six segments and tomorrow i want to move to 13 segments of 12 mm. segments so that is possible that's what i'm trying to say as a standard oracle functionality that is not possible but nowadays there are consulting companies available in the market ossi is one such consulting company wherein i worked uh, with uh, uh, the ossi wherein we have developed some custom uh, uh, solution on that so i'm not sure like what exactly the current status but now in us there is a company by name eprentice they provide a solution for that okay so what they do is basically their custom solution would be to update your chart of account structure table with those extra segments and update all other relevant tables throughout your ERP, your PO. As you know, like in most of the tables, we do not uh, what you call store the entire account code combination. You store only the code combination ID. So they they, they update your GL code combinations uh, table and then chart of account structure table and some other tables wherein this particular uh, enter segment structure is actually uh, stored. 
but that solution is possible but again that's a custom solution and again the good thing is i, I think uh, e, e printers uh, company is actually certified by oracle so even if you go with this e printer solution okay of updating of all your tables uh, with their solution and after that uh, in any in any regular production support if there are any issues we can still raise an sr with oracle and oracle cannot say that no 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 you have done so many back back end updates i am not going to provide a support because you can explain them that yes we have uh, done this kind of changes through e print is uh, uh, what do you call uh, tool okay okay and yeah, that was my point yeah. got it yeah okay